Hey folks, welcome back into another episode of the Mark and Austin Show on the Mark and Let's Go podcast. You hate to see a game that was where there was that many points scored and was that exciting and that that many swings in momentum, etc. Effectively get ended by. I remember when you did that interview. I think it was for the game against Georgia. They were asking you about your uh, dad's play there in the national championship. And I think you said that he could have gotten more separation, but- um... there, there were some technique fundamentals in the receiver that weren't perfect in, in, in the 80s. I, I had to throw in a few, uh, <laughs> a few uh, points of critique there. Yeah, man, he played for the Steelers and the Eagles both. So, um, you know, he, he was doing some things right for sure. Yeah. Uh, playing for the yeah. NFL, so. Uh, like the video if you like the video, ring the notification bells. Have a phenomenal weekend. As always, we'll catch you in the next one. Hey everybody, this is Greg Garrity. So Anthony Lottie will punt it away from the 41. Greg Garrity is the deep man for Penn State at the 10 yard line. Uh, former Penn State receiver and 2016 Big Ten champion. You're listening to the best uh, Penn State Nittany Lion podcast, the Mark Lesko podcast. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome into another episode of the Mark and Austin Show here on the Mark Lesko Podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, this is a Penn State football podcast. We cover that three days a week. Uh, that is the main the main show on my channel here, and uh, I'm joined by Austin here. We post three, at least three days a week. <clears throat> I started posting shorts and short clips of each episode, too, for those of you that don't want to watch the whole episode, but... Uh, this show particularly cover Penn State football, the latest news, and uh, we're just a couple fans giving our analysis and thoughts uh, every week. So right now in the off season, three days a week. During the season, probably do two days a week, uh, pretty much pre and post game. And uh, if you are interested in some of my other content on here, <clears throat> some fitness related stuff, and uh, just sports related stuff with the shorts, and then fitness related uh, content and then got a couple other shows coming up and we're got, I'm going to be doing some interviews on here and stuff too. So uh, fairly uh, early on in our, ch in the channel in terms of expanding on it and everything. But uh, for this show in particular, I'm joined, uh, like I said, by Austin, we're going to talk some uh, Penn state history today. So we're, we're basically what we're doing for these episodes is we're, it's going to be the whole week. So we're going to cover each position group and our favorite player and least favorite player from each position group uh, over the years. So we're pretty much going like defense all the way to offense. And, to, and uh, we're just going to talk each position, what our favorite player was, our least favorite <clears throat> at, of all time uh, for this week because uh, I'll be on vacation. So. We're doing these three episodes all week, and uh, I think it's something you guys will enjoy, and I think it's something you guys might anticipate as the week goes on to get our thoughts on uh, each position. So, Austin, welcome in, man. I'm pretty excited about pretty excited about doing this. Yeah, I think it'll be fun to kind of walk down memory lane and take a take a look back at Penn State history and some of the some of the players that you know, these various positions across the board and kind of, you know, select just one that's our personal favorites, um, you know, and kind of why we feel that way, et cetera, et cetera. But um, obviously I, we're going to probably be, I would anticipate a little bit biased towards um, relatively recently. And by that, I mean like the last 20 years, just because that's when we've been alive watching. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, there might be a couple of guys that, that sneak in there, um, at certain position groups just because of historically just how talented they were. Um, so yeah, definitely going to be a fun time. I'm excited to get into it. Well, there's tons and tons of guys that a lot of you probably have never heard of because, well, who knows, maybe you have depending on who's listening, but uh, you know, some of, some of my guys are going to go back quite a bit. Some of you may not have heard of them. Uh, you know, if you're a longtime Penn State fan, you've heard you've heard about just about every single one of them. 
But uh, another thing about Penn State, too, is there's a lot of father-sons. And there's actually some, I think there were some grandfathers in there, too. If I remember right, maybe not. I know, like, Mike Monty's dad played at Penn State. And th- that's a huge list. Uh, was Newski. There's a lot of there's a lot of guys that uh, that would be on that list in terms of yeah I'm trying to think if there would Austin is there any grandfathers on that list I don't know I feel like that's may- maybe a little too far but Joe I, was at Penn State a very long time so I'm sure there probably was um, to be completely honest with you there there, there probably was uh, there there were probably th- uh, third generation players. Um, but there, I mean, there's a whole host of of you know first and well, second generation players as well. So, Greg Garrity, obviously, he's another one. Sure, uh, we've had on here, friend of the show. So Greg Garrity Jr. But uh, also, we're gonna start with uh, defensive backs. We'll go corner, safety, and then linebacker for this episode. So basically, we'll just go favorite and least favorite corner favorite and least favorite safety favorite and least favorite linebacker uh and we can go as far back as you want so i guess we could start with you man like who's your favorite penn state corner of all time and can you come up with the least favorite of all time yeah i mean this one's kind of this one's kind of interesting because I feel like from a talent perspective there were really only a handful of corners that you really looked at and were like Wow, like all right, this this dude can play. This guy's a baller. Um I'm gonna go. Man, I, there's probably a decent chance we're gonna overlap here. Uh I, I feel like I have to go with Alan Zamitis at defensive back. I feel like he was probably for a long while there growing up, he was like the best defensive back Penn State had uh, until really, quite frankly, very recently with Joey Porter Jr. Uh, and now Kalen King, um, you know, uh, Amani Oruwarie was a very talented corner as well. But I think Zemitis was one of those players on a Penn State defense that wasn't necessarily all that great at forcing turnovers, at actually picking balls off and, and, and forcing turnovers and getting extra possessions and all those types of things. So um, he was a pretty dynamic guy. Obviously, he had a couple of uh, – at least one pick six in his career that was um fairly memorable but um yeah, yeah. I, would pro- I would probably say Zemitis would probably be my most most favorite defensive back what what are what are your thoughts on uh on most favorite my favorite corner of all time right now I'm trying to really decide on uh my least favorite but uh my favorite corner of all time at Penn State, probably Justin King, because – and there's a lot of guys on the list. Alan Zemitis is definitely one of those guys. Uh, John Capaletti was actually a defensive back at one point too, but uh, just like Kajana Carter was a linebacker at one point. Uh, Mark Rubin, if you guys remember him, he was a receiver at one point, so – I'm kind of going to go with like what they graduated as. So my favorite corner of all time is Justin King because he was a great athlete. Pat McAfee talked about how he played him in high school. Justin King had like six touchdowns against his high school. And I think it was a playoff game. Uh, Justin King, because he was a great athlete, he played offense too. I think he started out as a receiver, made the move to, corner and he was one of those guys that got signed with like Derek Williams and like Dion Butler and uh Norwood he was one of those big signees that came into Penn State when they didn't have to uh between him and Derek Williams I believe they were both five-star athletes coming out of high school and they both signed at Penn State so one because he was one of my favorite just performers of all time he was a great shutdown corner i i remember one bad game and i was against ohio state in 2007 when i think it was like terry rubisky and like brian hartline and those guys just 
he couldn't do anything against them. I think it was Terry Robisky that was like one on one with him the whole game, and they just shut them down. Or they he 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 just he shut down Justin King. Justin King could not just he couldn't guard him. It was it was it was nearly impossible in the whiteout game. Morelli had a terrible game that game too. But uh, I say Justin King because of his performance on the field. And the fact that he came into Penn State at such a at the time that he did, and it really helped turn around the program. Really, it did. And he went on to play for the Steelers, and he, now he has a podcast. He's doing a lot with NIL. So his overall impact, Justin King. Um, when you think of Justin King as a Penn State player, as a Penn State fan, you you know you you think of a lot of good things. Um, Justin King is a name that stands out in the history of Penn State football. So. He's my favorite for sure. Uh, Zubmitis is definitely a, a, a probably a close second because he did a lot for Penn State too. He's a, made a big impact on the program, and he was again one of those senior guys on that 05 team that helped the freshmen like Justin King and Derek Williams and guys like that. So, Austin, who's your least favorite corner? Yeah, uh, well, let, let me preface this by saying. When they're when I say my they're my least favorite, uh, it has nothing to do with them as people. Uh, I have not no issues with them personally um, or anything like that. It's just mainly due to maybe lack of performance or I think maybe there were better options that weren't explored. Yada yada. But I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with one guy that you actually probably like. I'm gonna go uh, with Stephen Morris. He just he wasn't big enough to play at this level. Yeah. Um. So it, it was really just a function of just him not being physically tall enough, long enough to really play an outside corner position, really even a slot position. I mean, for God's sakes, he was like five seven or five eight. Like he was not a big guy at all. Um, he was yeah, he, he's very little. Yeah, a tiny guy. Um, he played he played with a ton of heart. I you know, and, and it was at a very very tumultuous time. Uh, with O'Brien coming in as as a first year head coach, um, to be one of the one of those leaders on that team, but it, man, that was just a mismatch for any receiver he had to go against. It, it just was not was not super ideal. Um, so really, for those reasons, that was probably it really probably has less to do with with Morris as a player and and that kind of stuff, and just more a function of it. It just really was detrimental to the team. Uh, it, it was just a liability um, that that matchup specifically. Um, so for those reasons, I, I would have to probably say that as being my least favorite at, for sure in the last decade. Yeah. I've mentioned him on here before I interviewed him for a paper. He was a really nice guy, really generous with his time. Uh, I was really, really happy that he stayed and to the, for the after because he ended up starting and, it was him and like Obing Ajapong, Malik Willis, uh, Trevor Williams, those guys that were our defensive backs, really. Trevor Williams, he's another guy that played both ways, had a good career in the NFL, but uh, he's one of those guys that stay behind. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, he he was very small and probably didn't lo- live up to all of it. You know, you had a guy like uh, uh, Adrian Amos who – Started out as like not a very, I don't think he's very high recruit to an outstanding player and a long NFL career. He's still in the NFL. So my least favorite corner of all time. And I can't, I think uh, Obing Aljapong was a safety. So I can't say him right now, but uh, my least favorite Penn State corner of all time was Tariq Castro Fields because, uh, he did, and I know you agree with that. He did not live up to his five star status at all. He he made it to the NFL. He got drafted. Did he? I, did he, he wouldn't draft? tackle. No, <laughs> he wouldn't. He, just, he wouldn't tackle. He had he had all the tools. He had length. He had speed. He just he just was not good, and well, he, he never could, developed into that five star guy. Plus, he wouldn't tackle. No. But uh, no, that, that's a good one. I think I, he I'm got not, drafted. Yeah, he did get drafted. I think he might have gone definitely middle rounds or something like that maybe fourth or fifth round or something like that just just because of his, his sheer athleticism very athletic guy um like like you said he had all the tools but he just he just wouldn't tackle uh 
that that's in large part why we uh, lost that one game to Michigan State. He wouldn't wrap up. They kept the, they kept throwing out in the flat on these little quick passes. Yeah. He'd come up and he missed the tackle, uh, and they were just getting yak yeah. yards like go, go, like it was going out of fashion. Very frustrating. Well, he, um, he just he just wasn't good, man. He just wasn't very good. He he was that five star guy that you and I talked. I'm pretty sure he was one of the first players you and I ever talked about in the gym was Tariq Castro Fields and his ability to just not be good. And 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 you got a guy coming in to play defensive back. He's tall. He's got long arms. He can move. He had good hips. His tape was great. Uh, Alabama was pushing for him hard to the end of his recruitment and never really lived up to the hype. And, and, you know, it, it happens. It, it does happen. There's a prime example. Another guy, which, which I almost said for the same reasons was Lamont Wade. Yeah. Um, very he was, similar. He was, sa- he was a safety, but well, he started as a nickel corner. Yeah. And he, if you're, if you remember correctly, cause John Reed got hurt. Yeah. And then he came in as, as a freshman and played some nickel. Um, and frankly, I thought he was better in a nickel than, than he was as a safety, uh, overrunning coverages, jumping, jumping stuff. He shouldn't have been jumping, uh, you know, eyes getting caught in the backfield as, as opposed to on the guy you're supposed to be covering, whatever, yada, 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 yada. Um, you know, borderline five-star guy, tremendous athlete, uh, and just couldn't really put it together to, to be all that productive. So very similar to Castro Fields. I thought about, um, you know, putting him up there, but. But yeah, no, you're you're 100 percent right. That's a good one. It's actually one I didn't even think of. Generally, generally, I try to I try to forget my my least favorite things and and push them to the side or get them out of my mind because they they frustrated me at the time. But no, that, that's a good one. It looks like he's still in the NFL. He's with the Niners, but he was a six round pick, Castro Fields. Uh, he was a four star guy. I. I'm pretty sure at the end of it, he was a five-star guy, just like Lamont Wade. Lamont Wade was extremely highly, highly rated. Uh, but yeah, he just never panned out. Lamont Wade, same thing. Just, I don't know, man. He just, he just didn't pan out. Like he, he was, he was so talented, and he got. I think he was signed by the Steelers. I know that. Uh, he was. Let's see. Yeah, so I think you said but he's a borderline five star. He was pretty much a five star. Uh and I and then I believe he was just signed by the Steelers. Did it say what uh what round of the draft he went in? I I don't think he was drafted. I think he was just Oh really? The Steelers signed Wade as an undrafted free agent. Oh no. So okay. Was... Okay. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. okay. And I know for a fact the only reason they drafted him was because of his speed, and they were going to put him on special teams. It's the only reason they, I, if if I said drafted, I mean to say that the only reason they signed him was because right of his speed because he was, man, he was such a good athlete. But uh, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Definitely a good uh, a good selection though. Just never, never quite, never quite panned out. You know, just. Wasn't the uh, could never put it all together. Him and him and Castro Fields were two guys that just didn't pan out at all. They were it so, happens. They just never developed, man. Castro Fields never developed. Lamont Wade never developed. I mean, it shows. One was a sixth round pick. One wasn't drafted. They were both literally first round in five star guys. So well, and, and you know another thing here uh, i i recall you know when all the stuff was going on and like you know getting these pretty you know highly touted blue chip guys to sign and then they just weren't getting the 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 translation onto the field for production from a production mm-hmm. perspective mm-hmm. you know even i was kind of sitting there and kind of holding down the fort and thinking like you know, is it is it terry smith is he the problem from from just a coaching perspective because like you know, these guys aren't developing even a guy like John Reed, like he was really good as a freshman because that's the measuring stick we measure freshmen by. And then like, he never really got better. Like he was always just like pretty good for the whole time, which is Bruno like, Mars. That, yeah, that's fine. Um, 
I don't know how he didn't get, get compared to Bruno Mars more often. He looked just like <laughs> Yeah, kind yeah, kinda. And he was but, there for uh, like five years too. Oh yeah. No, oh, yeah, he played a bunch of football for us, but but yeah, like just that was one of those times where I was like, Yeah, is it Terry Smith? Like what's going on? And now he's pretty much a four year starter. And he well, still yeah. didn't really pan and, out. And and now you look at what's going on now with Joey Porter Jr., with Kalen King, with some of the you know some of these other guys they have in the system right now that are playing at a high level, and it's like, no, it, it wasn't Terry un- unless he totally revamped how he coaches for some reason. And I highly doubt that was the case. It was just them. Yeah, they, they they hit their ceiling, and and that was that was that. Um, but yeah, no, definitely definitely some good ones for uh, for defensive back. I I, I like oh. both. I like both those. I like personally never, uh, and you know Terry Smith, he played at Penn State too, but I never personally thought that it was Terry Smith. I just never really thought that because you know he had a Monty uh he had he had uh, several guys that went on to get drafted and play in the NFL. Monty Awarie, he's still there. Uh, yeah, and uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. I think it was Amir Abdullah. The running back? He was a running back from Wisconsin, Amir yeah, Abdullah. I'm, hold on. I'm trying to think of uh... – are, are, are you thinking of uh, – what's his face from Ohio State? Yeah. Okuda? Uh, uh, Jeff Okuda. Yeah. So, he was the third overall pick in the 2020 draft. So, that was Joe Burrow, Chase Young. Okay. They're doing good. Jeff Okuda was three to the Lions. That's how good he was. He got, I believe, released, and Amani is still on the team with the Lions. And that's a different Lions team right now. So, and he was like a sixth round pick, Amani Awarie. Um, Austin, who was the other guy? Who was the other corner on that team? Well, they had um, Lucas. Um, Jordan on Lucas. On that team, too. Huh? Jordan Lucas? Yeah, Jordan Lucas. Um, and then the other corner, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, there's just so many guys that there's Malik Golden was on that team. And then Christian Campbell, that's who I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, And he, he was the sixth round pick to Christian Campbell. So, you know, he had Christian Campbell, Monty Warrior, Malik Golden, uh, why can't I remember names right now? Um, the guy that blocked the guy that took the Grant Haley back, Grant Haley, um, Marcus Allen, he had him too, you know. So, which I understand why you say that because the coach is someone that you look at, obviously. But I just never thought that man because he always had like a lot of good guy, like at least, for, at least he's getting draft picks, you know. For me, it was just getting a little funky as to why, like. You'd get like a couple of three stars and like a couple of four stars, and the three stars would would progress well and become really good, and the blue chip guys would like be what they were, and they just never really, Mm -hmm. you know, they 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 never transformed into the you know uh, really kind of like an all conference level player, right? Never it just never happened. So you're sitting there kind of scratching your head, like this doesn't make sense. And then when once the sample size gets big enough, where it's been it's been like five years six years seven years you're like what the hell's going on here like this is this is very weird um but you look at what's going on now and and things are trending almost directly up um with with production translation from from recruiting the recruiting's really good and the production has been really good the development very uh great draft position has moved up uh for those for those players um everything's going in the right direction there so uh, clearly, it wasn't uh, it wasn't Terry. So apologies, Terry, for for uh, even having that thought cross my mind. Uh, you're doing doing a heck of a job. Tip the cap. Well, Troy Apke too was another guy that uh, we talked about that with Greg. How Deion Sanders said he's fast for a white guy. Couldn't believe how fast he was. He was quick. But uh, on to safety and a linebacker. Want to make sure we have enough time for both of those because especially linebacker. But uh, Safety wise, who was your favorite of all time? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Brisker. I I really like Jaquan. I was high on him. Uh, every when when they got him in from from JUCO, I thought he was gonna be a really good player. Um, 
and he was. He could do it all. He could come down to the box. He could play coverage. He could play center field. He could pick off balls. Um, really, really loved what he was doing. I thought personally he was he was snubbed in the draft as well, uh, similarly to uh, to Porter Jr. And by all indications, uh, you know, with his first year with, with Chicago, uh, you know, he's doing a heck of a job. So he was definitely worthy uh, of of a first round uh, selection, and and the Bears. Uh, got a steal in the second round with with uh, Brisker. He's he's a great great player. He's a great great dude. Like you know, he's just he, he does it yeah. the right way. Still doing good. And he you know he obviously he had a phenomenal NFL career um, in his first year, and then you know he he was literally I mean he's a second round pick and he was one of their best players on that uh, Chicago bears team. So Austin, give me your least favorite real quick. And then I'll, I'll give you my two. Um, I'm really having a hard time. Like I had someone in mind, but then I'm like, shit. Now I'm thinking of like so many other guys, but go yeah. Ahead and get uh, here. My, my least favorite is also going to be a guy that maybe you might've liked as well. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he, he kind of was a bit popular, but again, it, this is solely based on coverage skills, just not really being adequate from the safety position. And that's going to be Anthony Scarato. Uh was not a fan of him in coverage whatsoever. Uh, loved when he would come down in the box. He was really good there, but he was not a coverage guy. He could not cover. He was not dynamic at forcing turnovers in, in many scenarios and games. He was actually a liability back there um, when they were trying to throw over the top. Um, not a fan of that. Uh, never was. Uh, and he was on some really good teams, you'll you'll know. Um, and, and many of our viewers may know that as well. But, um, yeah, he, he, he didn't do it for me. And then it all culminated in that Rose Bowl matchup where, uh, you know, Mark Sanchez made him look like he wasn't even playing. Uh, and then that was a, a pretty – pretty crap way to kind of end things that was just like basic defense that he he particular because they they literally singled him out the whole game yeah they and went they, they went they up. went at they went at him yeah so many times and you would think out of short out of, out of sheer dumb luck you just get lucky one time without any opportunities like you would just happen to undercut a route or you happen to be in the in the proper position no, <laughs> never well, happened the whole game. Why didn't Penn State adjust? They never adjusted in that game. Never. No, they didn't. And 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 that was on that was on on the coaching. That that was on Joe. That yeah. was on just... uh that was on Scrap. That was on uh, on Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator. They they kept playing this soft defense, and a guy like Scarato and, and even their other safety players, even their defensive backs in large part didn't really have the requisite speed to kind of match up with those USC receivers. Like it was just well, tough. Th this is another thing too. They never adjusted. They stayed in the four, three. They should have probably taken one linebacker out, at least put it, put it in a nickel package. I mean, they, they, they literally just put six defensive backs out there, do a fucking dime look and that's it. And they didn't do it. And now they played base. You know, and you know, you've heard us talk about the, the, what'd you say? They played. They played base like cover two defense yeah. <laughs> the yeah. whole game. And, and then, and then you want to talk about the lifting program we've talked about with Penn State. Watch that game, and that's what you'll see. The Penn State lifting program, you know, compared to USC's. I, I was it's gonna just, make. That's what happens when you. I, I was gonna make that joke. It was as god dang leg presses to failure. That's what it was. That's what it was. They just they just weren't as explosive as you as USC. As good as that defense was for Penn State, they were extremely talented. They were very east and west. They they, they didn't really have a ton of like agile ability and they they just, struggled defending the verticality of the field. I mean, all the defensive backs, even like Mark Rubin, he played basically played a nickel that game. He's just standing there like this. They don't really turn, they don't really anticipate, they just one on one, straight ahead. And then we dictate what we do based off what we what, based off what they did, and they weren't quick enough to do that. You can't do that against USC. Was probably the best team in the country that year. We unfortunately played them. Now 
if USC or Penn State plays the national title that year against Florida or Oklahoma, I think they both have a shot at winning. But we played USC, who was probably better than Oklahoma and Florida that year. So, and and, but, and uh, Sanchez also played the game of his life. Let's not forget that one. Yeah, he did. Uh, he, he couldn't miss. Uh, no, nah. he didn't miss a single pass. He was a cocky. Uh, you know, I didn't like him at all. Well, but he, he has the butt fumble, which is I like was going to say he, ha- play he had time. to pay his penance with the butt yeah. fumble. Yeah. But uh, my favorite safety of all time, Scrotto, you're right. Like he, he could have played a lot better in his day, but he was one of my favorite players. And I'll say he was one of my favorite players because apparently I looked like him in high school because I was at a spikes game one time and the, one of the workers thought I was him. I was like, really? I'm a skinny 170 pound high school kid, and you think I'm Anthony Scarato? Like, I've never seen him in person, but I would imagine he's probably bigger than me. But uh, <laughs> my favorite safety, or just some honorable mentions Mike Zordich, obviously. Uh, his son played fullback for Penn State, running back, whatever. Ju Balwe. He played like corner technically on the 99 team. He was a good player. Ethan Kilmer had that great catch in uh, Orange Bowl. Chris Harrell, Calvin Lowry. Chaz Powell didn't really like him, but uh, he was pretty – he was a good athlete at least. Played both ways. But um, my favorite safety of all time, I'm going to have to say, is Derek Fox. Do you remember him, Austin? Yeah, Um, a little little bit. He he could – he could – he, he didn't shy away from scrumming around back there. Yeah. And here's the thing too, man, like you don't see a lot, you don't, you, you don't see, especially in the NFL, you don't see a lot of white defensive backs. So, you know, nothing, nothing like it's nothing, you know, against any one particular race, obviously, but dude, these, these, the, all these, all these safeties that are my favorites from Penn state, um, most of them are white, you know, Mark Rubin, Derek, Derek Fox, uh, you know, they're, they're white guys. So you don't see that a lot in uh college football. You don't see it a lot in the NFL. I think there's literally a stat where like the last white cornerback to play in the NFL, to start in the NFL was like 2003. He was played for the Eagles. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, yeah, not, he was like, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I was going to say tr- Troy uh, playing safety is like one of the only guys I can really even think of off the top of my head. When I, when I think of guys like that, uh, I, I struggle to even, to even think of guys that played like receiver that wasn't the slot. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it is just kind of, just kind of happens to be that way. Yeah. Well, Derek Fox is my favorite. Hard hitting, uh, got interceptions, tackled. He was just a very hard hitter. Probably my favorite player of all time. My play favorite safety of all time at Penn State. Uh, it, you know, if you want to watch Derek Fox, ninety nine against Miami when they went down to Miami and won. It's on YouTube. Watch that Derek Fox. Probably my favorite safety of all time. And again, another white guy. <laughs> As a defensive back, Mark Rubin, uh, my second favorite, clo- very close second, Mark Rubin, fittest man on Wall Street, um, very, very handsome man, second favorite uh, safety of all time. Uh, he was really good. He started at receiver at Penn State, and then he moved to defensive back. But uh, that's one thing he's known for, man, is his looks, because he's the fittest man on Wall Street, and he, like, he was he was well known in New York for I think he's just because he's the fittest man on Wall Street, but uh, and then his wife is actually like a, a fitness instructor, like one of those like I think she's like a Peloton uh, fitness instructor. But uh, he's a uh, he's my second favorite, and then there's a few other guys that uh, kind of jump in there too. But Derek Fox is my favorite, and then. Mark Rubin, very close second. And my least favorite safety of all time is Nick Suke, another white guy. Uh, God, I hated watching him play football. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, he, he was not very good back there. Dude, he was such a good recruit, too. 
he and, he, uh, he was honestly he was he was worse in coverage than Scarada was <laughs> I think to be honest I uh, that's actually a really good one I wish I would have said that one. I completely was, forgot about Nick Suke. He was so bad he was so bad he was so bad I forgot about him how he started and he started he did he started for like two years I don't know how he started he was so bad he got he literally got worse as remember when he was number eighteen he was pretty yeah. good. Yeah, they just regressed. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. It was not good. Definitely, definitely best. Uh, best left to uh, a very distant memory. And uh, he was. Uh, he was. You know, he was a. Uh, he was a guy that wore Justin King's number, and you're just like, yeah, you're nothing like Justin King. And he was that guy too that wore way too much equipment, like he had like armbands like an arm sleeve he had all the eye black on he had like the leg sleeve like he had like all like leg bands on it's like dude what are you what, what are you wearing like why are you wearing all that he looked crazy man he looked like he was ready to rumble problem was he couldn't play all that well Chaz Powell too Chaz Powell was just decked out in all the equipment you know all the armbands and I think Greg explained that to us the one time he said as a player you can pretty much wear whatever you want you know, you can wear like 20 leg bands. Like Brandon Smith wore like 20 leg bands. It's like, what's the point of that? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of, and then to your point, that's kind of where we're heading to the linebackers. Yep. Uh, which is, you know, obviously a very, very, very important position group here at Penn State. Mine will be very, very quick. Uh, my, my favorite linebacker, also my favorite Penn State player of all time, uh, no holds barred. Paul Puzlesny, not even a question. Um, elite linebacker, elite skills, fundamental as all heck, very athletic. Uh, you know, that that uh that replay of, of of watching him just track down Troy Smith in the open field, uh, the closing speed that he had, uh, his his sheer ability to do any anything and everything to go get that ball carrier, uh, reenacting the the Lavar leap. Um at a, for a goal line stand, like just awesome player. He was so fun to watch. Favorite player of all time. Uh, he was just outstanding. Well, he dove over Least, the line that one time yeah. and tackled Lawrence Maroney midair. Yep. Yeah. Met him. Met him midair. Took him. Took him. Took him down. It was that was a great play. Just an awesome play. Uh, and then I'm gonna go. Least favorite might be, man. Least least favorite's kind of kind of tough. I'm kind of torn for different reasons. I'm gonna go Kari Fort because he left. That really burnt me up inside. I think I thought he could have been a really really good player. Um, and he did turn out to be a pretty productive player as it turns out. But uh, he could have been. Very, very good at Penn State as well. He yeah. didn't have to leave, uh, and he did. And, and that 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 burned me up. I was, I was ticked off about that. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's kind of an after afterthought. I want folks folks to remember the greatness that was Paul Puzlesny instead. Uh, definitely look up his, his highlights on YouTube. They're exceptional. Uh, how about how about you, Mark? Well, Corey Fort, as I've, I think I've told that story, he's the first person I saw in a class when I was in college. He was – the biggest person I've ever seen in my life. Um, like his arm was like as big as my, my whole body. It was insane. He was to this day, the biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. Kari Ford, uh, favorite LeVar Arrington, uh, close second is Courtney Brown. And that's, they were the first two picks in the NFL draft. There's a huge list of guys, obviously, uh, <laughs> that we could talk about, but, uh, least favorite, Probably Troy Reader because he left too. He's still in the NFL, has has had a long career, went to Delaware. But uh probably my least favorite Troy Reader because he left. Obviously it panned out well for him because he's still in the NFL. He won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Uh close second would be Kari Fort because again, he could have been this great talent and he left. Um he really he he was the pinnacle of what a Penn State linebacker could have been. He wore number eleven. Uh, he just 
yeah, it just sucked that he left because if those guys didn't leave, that 2012 team probably would have gone undefeated. I talked to Stefan Morris about that. Probably would have gone undefeated. They would have had Justin Brown, um, uh, Silas Red, Kari Fort, list of guys. If they would have stayed with Bill O'Brien, probably would have not lost a single game. So hitting a timer, Austin. Yep. But, uh, yeah, all I wanted to say about Reader very quick, it would have been awesome to have him for that 2016 year when we were down to, like, our 18th yeah. linebacker. But, yeah. anyway, yeah. we are hitting the timer. Folks, that is all for these position groups. We'll be back with another breakdown. Stay tuned. Catch you in the next one. See you guys.